Hi there. My name is Kevin Flanagan. I'm a partner at PLP Architecture. We're involved in a lot of innovative uh, thinking about the city and new city, including transport. If you go to our website, that's a perfect example. Um, I'm the designer of The Edge, which is uh, Bloomberg called the most uh, best internet example of Internet of Things at that time, and it was also the most sustainable building at that time, uh, according to Briam. One of the things that's important here is to understand where the future is going and not necessarily what this project represents, though this was the first time of integration of uh, uh, systems having to do with monitoring uh, the interior and movements of people. Uh, one of the things that's focused here is BIM, and I'm going to discuss very, very briefly at the end what's going on in the states having to do with block blockchain, where they're not focused on building forms and the information derived from those, but actually a much larger logistics and integration vertically of the systems, including costings and, uh, does the slide move? Um, costings and uh, uh, marketplace uh, financing and sales. So they have a different approach, which is dependent more on information rather than the physical uh, representation. Um, is it goes? Is really slowed? Do I have to press? Okay, so now I press. Is anything happening? <laughs> this is okay. Thank you. <laughs> that was my like ten seconds. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we'll go really quickly through this. The Edge is three years old technology, about three thousand days, and Deloitte has now since moved out of the building actually, and they had about thirty-three thousand sensors, about one uh, two hundred and twenty sensors per person. The real intent originally was to create a building that was just state of the art so they could sell the building to Deco, which was a German, uh, a German property developer. The benefits are very clear in the building. People enjoyed working there. There was a, a tremendous amount of sustainability that was part of the idea. But also what happened when Deco got involved with Deloitte and OVG was that they realized they wanted to do a state of the art building that could be sold to the market but acted as a showcase for products that were being developed in Holland, particularly by Philips. There was a lot of logistical, trying to uh, pre-planning, having to do with precast uh, manufacture and bring to site to save time and money. Um, there were a lot of innovative things that you can find out about. One of the great things, of course, was that they, they were able to use the benefits of new apps that were just being developed at that time uh, in order to determine where people were within the building, what their settings were, in terms of uh, light and heat and, uh, and motion. But those technologies now have been advanced further. Deloitte itself now has sniffers in their buildings, in their headquarters in London. And the whole of the technology is moving much more towards medical advances and health and well-being. Um, there were some benefits in terms of management costs. They didn't have to clean the washrooms quite as often. But generally, what happened was that we had the typical office building, and then we had the central space, the atrium. Now, for architects designing the building, we never expected that millennials would simply not want to work in the typical office space, but really wanted to work within the central space. And in fact, 80% of the applications say they don't necessarily work for, want to work for Deloitte, but actually work, want to work in the space proper. And that overturns everything that we've, we know about design in terms of architecture, because what we're wanting to create now are places where people want to be. They want to be happy and uh, productive and really make a, a difference. So we're no longer talking about smart buildings, but smart cities as a as a, con a, a conurbation of buildings. Where this is really going to be take hold is in Toronto as a showcase for Google headquarters, uh, where big data is going to be gleaned from the users. And the buildings themselves are going to be made dynamic and changeable. They're going to make a test pad just to the front of the slide. And the systems of uh, urban design are really going to be based on uh, quite a disruptive uh, principle of distributed uh, planning, uh, it allowing for uh, transport that's going to be flexible without staged uh, positions or stations, and it's going to move the economy forward uh, dramatically based on big data.